Hey, fat guy with stains on his shirt. How you doing? It's Chris, and welcome back to Something Else Amiga. What are you doing? A lot of this stuff, but I wanted to cover this 1581 drive I got at the old uh, World of Commodore show. Inside, sorry, my desk is trashed. So this case is a Commodore 64 drive. It's a three and a half inch drive. Sorry, and it takes. An FB354 floppy drive. Except the lights were independent for power and drive access over here because this unit had some magic in the back. Now this has nothing in it but the shell so I can hide all my wires and stuff. And in its place was this drive. This is the drive that used to sit in here. 354 would sit right in here. Except this little tapered LED uh, won't be in there. The button will. I gotta put the button back on because I think it's right here, or I dropped it and lost it. Please stand by, I'm experiencing old man difficulties. You ever just have a day which not your day? Yep, yeah, that's my day every day. Oy, oy, oy. The cool thing about this case is it has metal thread inserts, so you're not gonna totally obliterate your screws when you put them in there. There we go. If two didn't hold it, four never would. Put that in here like this. Now the problem I'm having is buttons, although here, it needs to go up here on drive. So I could take this out or run a wire and do some magic. These are also tapered lights, which means they're small on one end and get larger. That way you can insert them into this hole. Now as a precautionary test, I took a blue LED here and filed it down with an old fingernail file that I don't know where I put it. Now this one's blue. I don't know if I'm leaving it blue, but I just worked on this a little bit at a time, filing and tapering it down because the lights that Commodore used are really thin, so they would fit in here perfectly. I mean, it does work. Maybe I will leave it blue because nobody has blue, and it fits in there flush. I'll have to do one for power also. And maybe rig something up to the 12 volt on the on the wire here on the line here. This is one of the bigger drives from an Amiga 2000. Now there's a couple other screws that go here. They are the sharp dudes. Oh, there's four of them. One, two, three, four. And then you have your two K screws here and here for the top. I'm gonna have to figure out a way to run the cable through and external to the floppy port. I was thinking about using the old GoTek port. I have a GoTek external and that would, I mean, that would work. I don't want to have to destroy or modify the case in any way, shape, or form. So my game plan is this. I don't have a game plan. I need a button. I have an Amiga 500 button that's not going to fit because it just sits there. But it does fit in the case. See that? It does fit in there perfectly. So if I can wedge all this in place, I should be able to get it to hold a disc and push the button. Now let's put a disc in and see how it works. This is the Pi Storm disc. I'm going to hold this. So it does work. The Amiga 500 button. Look. Oh, good eject on that. It works. It's just free floating. So it kind of gets off a little bit. I'm afraid eventually it's going to fall off. But that is the button. So I'm going to have to get a 3D print of that and make a new one. Now you got to make sure that these tabs here are in the tabs here. Otherwise, it's, you're going to be too far ahead and it's not going to fit. It like folds into place. And then the other cover slides down like this. It's got a button, it's got a round hole, it's got a slider. Might be too short. This might be not long enough. Alright, let's slice it. 16 minutes. I found the 1581 case on Thingiverse. And inside is a floppy button. I do have the whole thing, but the button's for a sand. Oh, yep. Samsung Antique. So many different floppy drives. Slider and a dot. I mean, this will work too. 
this should I wish they could have all right let's uh let's do a hundred percent all right the first part's almost done I'll try that while I'm printing the second part whoa and report back it's 9 15 p.m. 10 25 p.m. both buttons are done this is the one I laid flat this is the one that I didn't lay flat they both turned out okay um, this one has a slight gap in the button, so I'm going to try the nice one first. The nicer one. Put a disc in. So I'm putting a disc in so I can attempt to put this in. It goes behind, and this piece slides over. And there you go. Oops, there you go. Perfect fit. Oh, but it falls out. Normally there was like a little grippy handle. I'll pull this one out. Um, carefully. Oh man. I'm going to try the other one. Yeah, these aren't perfect. They both come out. The other ones had like a claw that wrapped around, but this hole goes through. The button's a little separated, but let's see how it looks in the unit itself. All right. Perfect. Isn't that cool? Now, if I just put the screws in, it'll hold itself for now, but I need to lift up and pull this open. I have five screws left. Two of them go into the right side of the plate here. We're just going to put in just for a little stability. Now, final assembly, of course I do have to run my electrics and my lights, but this is just to show its possibility. Make sure you're uniform before you put this up there, put your button in there. I'm putting mine in to hold some pressure against the plate. Front lid goes on angle, locks into place. Oops. Make sure you get it underneath the lip of the floppy drive. Then carefully flip her over on her back side. You have a screw here and a screw here where the warranty seals were. You're going to need a John Holmes of a screwdriver. So put these in with, they are threaded. So do not man tighten them. You're just kind of letting them snug up. They do have metal grips. You don't want to, you're not tightening a lug on your tire. You're simply Give her a title. There we go. We have a 1581 from Commodore with a functional FB354. Once I get the proper cable, which I have, I'll have to designate an old floppy drive to be sacrificed. But I have some belt drive units that don't work. That's how I got the GoTech external there in the past. So I have a couple more of those. We'll be taking apart to get the guts out of, or buy a broken one on eBay. You don't care about the drive, you just want the electrics to plug into the back, run a cable out, and you get yourself a kick butt Amiga drive from a Commodore 64. It's still a Commodore product. Doesn't matter, it's three and a half inch. It's an Amiga drive. They were Amiga drives in them. So there we go. That'll look nice on a 3000, 3000 tower. So that is my Dude of the 1581 from Commodore, three and a half inch hard, uh, three and a half inch floppy drive, with a really cool. Uh, gonna have a blue light for the Amiga side, and that's all I got. So stay tuned for more updates when I get this thing fired up. I'll post another video. Thanks for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.